what is up everyone? I'm Rachel. Welcome back to my wild backyard here in the Black Hills of South Dakota. I am fresh out of popsicle soap. Everybody bought me out and loved them so much. I was like, okay, it's time to make some more. And if you've seen my video from last summer, I had to mangle my cutter just so I could cut these with the legit crinkle cut look. And we're going to do that again today. I had a different color scheme in mind, but my daughter ran off with my mica powders and dumped them everywhere. So we've been finding mica powder around the house for weeks. So I'm doing a different color scheme than I originally had planned. And we're going to use wider popsicle sticks and a new fragrance called Bahama Berry and Melon. I am pretty much in love with the smell. I think it fits well. So let's get into the kitchen and get this started. My lye solution is at 110 degrees and my fats are melted down and within 10 degrees of that we're at 104 and I did put some mango butter in this recipe just because it's a fruity popsicle soap. I thought that would be fun. And real quick before I get into this, I wanted to do a slow-mo of mixing the lye and the fats together because this is my favorite part. That was super fun. <laughs> Anyways, so for anyone new to soap making, I did want to mention this really quick. This is cold processed bar soap. It's made with sodium hydroxide, also known as lye. It can burn you and have strong fumes, so you want to make sure you're using proper lab safety when you're making soap that involves lye. I have my long gloves on. I have goggles on. I've got closed-toed shoes. Sometimes I'll wear long sleeves, but in the summertime, it's a little too hot for that. But I do have a window cracked and I am away from kids and pets. The kids are already in bed for the day. I had set out everything for this soap earlier in the day and the mica powders were in reach of my daughter on the counter. I made sure the lie was far, far away. Uh, but yeah, she still got to it. And I don't even know how I didn't notice right away, but I went in and saw them all over in her play kitchen and she told me she was making soap. And of course my heart melted even though I wanted to like yell <laughs> because I have no more of the colors that I had planned. I was going to do like a purple and a deep lavender, a magenta, an azure blue to make it look like berries because it's Bahama Berry and Melon by New Directions Aromatics. So yeah, we <laughs> have been vacuuming up mica powder. I see it like floating in the air when the light is shining through the windows but my heart just melted when she said that and I was like, oh, that's so sweet. So I just went downstairs to my tiny basement soap shop and grabbed some different colors and it ended up looking a lot like the one that I made last summer. So this is going to have four different layers and I am doing a little multitasking on the side. I'm making a mermaid soap for my sister and then for another friend. Um, so that's the turquoise and purple over on the side. I'm just going to do a fun little swirl and do a couple circle bars on the side. Now, because this is a layered soap, you'll notice I'm very aggressively mixing this. You want to have like a medium to thick trace for each layer. So that way the following layer doesn't fall through it and cause it to not look smooth or however you want it to be. So it's important to make sure it's thick enough. However, the extra mixing can add bubbles in there. So you have to tap it and get all those air bubbles out. I tried my best, but I still ended up with a little bit of air bubbles on this one. And then you do want to make sure that you scrape down the sides with your spatula between each layer. Otherwise, those colors will be stuck in the next layer on the sides and it just won't look as nice. And I am adding the fragrance oil into each layer one at a time. I wasn't sure how it was going to behave because sometimes fragrances or colorants can speed up or accelerate trace, making it thicker than you want it to be before you have a chance to work with it. So I usually don't mix up my colors and my fragrance until I am ready to work with each portion. Now, because this is layers, it's okay if it does thicken up some. It's not as big of a deal. Now, since this is involving lye, you probably don't want to be making this soap with little kids, even though this is a fun kid soap. So what I would recommend instead, if you're really wanting to teach younger kids how to make soap and get them involved in the process, is start with some melt and pour soap because the saponification has already happened. That's when the lye converts the fats into soap. So all you're doing is taking soap that's already made, melting it down, adding what you want to it, like some fragrance and colors, and then pouring it into a mold and letting it reharden. So that process goes pretty quick and it's a lot safer to do. You just have to melt it in the microwave or you could use a double boiler on the stove. So I bought a fun kit 
that I'm going to do with my daughter later in the summer. I'm not going to give you too much clues on what's in it, but it is a pretty fun kit that I found. So stay tuned for that video later in the summer. I think you'll enjoy it. And just a heads up, two of the coolest soaps I have ever made are coming up in the next week. So you're going to want to look for those. There's an ocean themed one and a basil lemonade one. And if you're liking these videos, please give it a like, leave me a comment. I love hearing from you, getting your feedback, and it does help the algorithm find me so that other people can find these videos too. I did use mica powders for all of my layers and if you want to make the colors pop, when you're done you're going to want to spray this down with isopropyl alcohol to help cut down on soda ash and then cover it and even put a blanket over it to help insulate it because that will help force gel phase which hardens up the bar and helps those colors pop and we really want the colors to pop on this one. I did use my custom mold that my husband made for me. It's a little bit taller and narrower to give it that popsicle shape. And I even curved the freezer paper down in the bottom to help naturally bevel those edges to make it look more rounded. So I let this sit in the mold for a couple days and then we're gonna take it outside and tackle this with my crinkle cutter. <laughs> Nothing has changed in this regard. I still can't cut straight to save my life, but hey, it's still usable fun soap. And I've had a lot of friends tell me that this has helped encourage their kids to wash their hands more. So I am all for that. So I always try to make sure I have a fun, kid-friendly soap in stock in my Etsy shop for anyone that's got a kid in their lives that they would like to gift something like this to, or, you know, just encourage them to wash hands. Um, so I, I only made like 12 or 13 of these, but they are in stock in my Etsy shop now. So snag one if you want one. Thank you guys for joining me in this video today, and I will see you in the next one very soon. <laughs> Don't lick the popsicles. <laughs>